If I were to make a list of things that I considered to be therapy, I would definitely count nature as number one and thrifting as number two. This past week, I spent a lot of time doing a lot of thrifting and nature therapy, and I'm the better for it. I am down in Delaware. I stopped and got my coffee because I am gonna go do some thrifting. I'm so bummed out because last night I went and stopped in at the Goodwill here in Newark and they added those awful scent boxes, like not a tiny little plug-in scent thing, like a giant box on the wall that sprays out cologne, basically. It's the worst, I don't understand. They're all over in the Goodwills in Connecticut. Not in the ones I've seen in New York yet, but I was so bummed to see that because I'm very sensitive to smell. And already Goodwill's hard enough because I definitely feel like they spray Febreze all over everything anyway. So already I struggle, but like I can't do the scent box. So I'm bummed out about that, but I'm excited because my mom sent me a brand new thrift store opening not far from here. So that's where we're going to go first. Okay, actually I went to another Goodwill first because it was on the way. This happens to be a big and really awesome Goodwill and I immediately spotted this broken frame which I love and I got because I've been looking for a frame for a photo of my father. And then I always check the bra section because I find new bras all the time and bras are so expensive. This did not work for me, but because it's new with tags, I'm gonna sell it on Poshmark and that will pay for the rest of my thrifting. When I lived in a larger home, I had a 1200 square foot townhouse. I was a sucker for paintings and pillows. I lined every wall I had and just absolutely loved filling my place with these little treasures. And these days, since I live in a 500 square foot cottage, I've learned to really enjoy looking, but I can only take things if it's absolutely something I love because it means something else is gonna have to leave the cottage. And I almost caved and got both this purse and those candle holders because they're both awesome, but I left them. There were so many amazing things in this Goodwill that day. It was really hard to leave these things, but I'm getting better at that. You might be like me and go running when you see the new rack roll out. I think the employees hate me for it, but I always have to check. I'm not sure why, but this Goodwill has the most incredible selection of shoes and also some other little treasures tucked in with them. And then it was time to move on to the brand new thrift store. I'm excited for a new thrift store. I haven't been in a new thrift store in a long time, so I'm excited. This store used to be a giant Ethan Allen furniture display store, and now it is a massive thrift store. I always appreciate when thrift stores have the half off colored tag. It makes for an even more exciting treasure hunt. This place was so large that I felt optimistic enough to even grab a basket <laughs> because I was certain I was going to find something I loved. After scouring the entire first floor, I found some things I liked, but nothing I loved. This was a really well organized and clean thrift store, which is not surprising since it was new, but honestly I felt like it could have all fit on one floor, but maybe with time that's going to change. 
I've been keeping my eye out for a new quilt because I have the urge to once again change around my bedroom just a little bit with maybe a refresh of the curtains and bedspread, but I didn't find anything. I did find it a little odd that all the furniture was on the second floor and not the first floor, but they had some fun stuff, including the thing I love the most that was, of course, already sold but was such a great price and a really great piece for whoever got it. I've also been thinking that I might want to get a four post bed like this, but this was the wrong size, though the style I think would have worked. After all that searching, this was the only thing that kind of tempted me. It was just the wrong colors for the cottage, but very cool. And like I said, just kind of not enough stuff for the big space, but I'm gonna check every time I come back down because maybe that's gonna change. Charlie, I hate you. <laughs> We're still working on it. <laughs> Normally I take Charlie into the stores with me when I go thrifting or go into different stores, but in his bag, I have a little bag. I'm sure you've seen it if you watched my videos before and he, he I think he likes it, <laughs> um, but it hurt my, it hurt my neck. So I've stopped using it for right now. Um, April is like the greatest month for being out and about with your dog because I can leave him in the car and it's not too hot, not too cold. And I actually had people ask me, don't I feel unsafe leaving him in the car? I guess I saw on a different vlog where I had left him in the car while I was thrifting. Um, the answer is no, and there's a few reasons why. Um, he has a like a crate, like a, a little dog house in the back of the car, and um, he's used it. I've used it with him since he was a baby, and he the moment he gets in it, he just goes to sleep, and he doesn't make a peep. He doesn't bark like he does when he sits up here with me. He doesn't do anything. He just sleeps. So I've actually tried to get him in the car, like a car seat where he could sit up and be harnessed in and let him look out the window, but he doesn't seem to like it. So I'm just going to stick with what we've got going because it works well. But when I leave, no one would have any idea that he's in the car because the windows are tinted and he doesn't bark. So you literally can't see that he's in there. So no one would be able to get him. No one would like know to even steal him because that's one concern because that does happen, especially with the little dogs, people steal them out of cars. The other concern was, um, aren't you scared someone will hit your car? Well, I mean, it could happen, but it could happen while I'm driving too. I just really try to pick my parking spot strategically knowing that he's in the car and I wouldn't want anyone to hit the car. So I pick spots where it's the least likely where that would happen. But I mean, obviously there's no preventing, you know, you can't a hundred percent prevent things, but I feel like I have a little system where he's safe. If ever I find that he starts to be a barker when I'm not in the car, then obviously this won't work because then people would know. But um, currently he's just asleep the whole time I'm in the store. <laughs> and then I do sometimes try and bring him out after. Like I don't want to bring him out and then go in because then people could know that he's in the car. But once I come out of the store, I bring him out because he does love to people watch and he likes to bark at people once he's out here. Right buddy? I am constantly hearing about how awesome this Habitat Restore is, and I've never been. This is my first time, and I can confirm this is a very, very large store with all kinds of treasures. This is just one of those stores that just keeps on going and going. I thought this radio was very cool. I obviously have no need for it, but so fun to see. And then this beautiful piece, I can't remember how much it was, but I remember it was not at all expensive and even has the original tin. Very, very cool. There are a few Habitat Restores in New York, not too far from where I live, but none of them are that great. They're not as large as this, and their prices are, I would say, at least triple the prices that were in this Habitat Restore. There were so many things I saw that I thought were amazing, including this little mini couch, which if I had a larger space, I would 100% buy for my little King Charles and let that be his bed. I am on the hunt for a new little chair from my living room. This would have been perfect, but I promised myself that the chair I get is going to be super comfortable, and that one wasn't. 
I need to find a cabinet to store all my art supplies in my little open storage area and there were so many here that would work but I would have had to haul them all the way back up to New York so I didn't do it. Okay, should we go to the park? Come to the park. With a little retail therapy done this day, I decided to take Charlie to the park, both for him, but also for me, because I felt like I needed to spend a little time in nature, and these little dandelions make me so happy. When I'm out and about in different places, I love to visit different parks where I've never been, so I often will just put in my Google Maps, park near me, and visit the one that's closest, and this day, this was the park that was closest. <laughs> I often wonder who was the person that decided that dandelions were a bad thing for us and that people should try and get rid of them. I feel so happy when I look at their bright yellow color and they're so good for us to eat their greens. They actually clean our liver and do so many good things for us. Sadly, in a park like this, they're also one of the most treated things, so I can't let Charlie eat them, even though that is all he wants to do. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it! You're not eating something. No, you're not eating that. You're not eating that. No. Buddy! No! Charlie! Charlie, leave it. No. <laughs> no! No, no! <laughs> Charlie! Nobody! Nah, -uh, leave it. <laughs> leave it! Char! Charlie, leave it! Drop it! What are you eating? Stop! No dandelions! No! You want a sticky? like that one, huh? Yes, boy. When we're in Delaware, Charlie is a big fan of my parents' fenced-in yard and all the fun he can have in it, as well as getting to hang out with his best buddy, Felix. They are so cute together. It makes me so happy seeing them. I had a photo shoot the next day down in Arlington, Virginia, and I have to say I've always been a little bit nervous about the Baltimore Tunnel and the bridges there. They just, I don't know, they don't make me feel at ease. And after we just saw the bridge collapse, I was super nervous this day. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day. I am down at a park in DC. I was supposed to be meeting a photography clients at their home, but they said, it's so beautiful. Can we please go to this park? And so I'm here a little earlier than them. And it's one of my favorite parts of this job. It's challenging when you work on location as a photographer, you can't control the light and you can't always control the conditions, the weather, all that kind of stuff, because you're at the mercy of when you're able to schedule with your clients. So it happens to be a beautiful day, but I want the kids to be happy. I'm photographing a six month old and a two year old. And as you know, with kids, nap times are really important. So it's 11 o'clock or it's 1045 now, but it's going to be 11 for their shoot, which 10 to two, that time when the sun's the brightest is never the most photogenic for people. You don't want to be out in the bright open sun during that time. It's totally doable for a photo shoot. And if that's when kids are happy, then that's when I want to do it. But it makes for a challenge because you have to find a spot where the light's going to look pretty. And so it's one of my favorite parts because you really have to be on your toes to do a good job because you have to try and figure out the good lighting, all that good stuff. And we don't have any clouds today, which is good in its own way. I love clouds. But so I'm while I'm waiting for them, I'm going to go find some really pretty spots hopefully to work where there's flowers, hopefully, and not too much sun. But it's, it's a fun challenge. And I'm glad I'm here a little bit early so I can just wander about and see what I find. And it's also fun just to get to work in a new space where you've never worked before. So
These little guys stink so bad, but they're so cute. I'm looking for little flowers on the ground because for a little six month old who can probably lay down and just barely sit up, it's gonna be so pretty. I'm so excited. These pictures are gonna look so serene like we're in the middle of nowhere, but in reality, <laughs> we're right on the major highway going through DC by the White House and all that stuff. So this is the crap. Oh, look, pink, 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 pink. Considering we were on the side of a major highway, this was a very dreamy, beautiful little spot. I'm in Maryland now, and I'm going to another photo shoot, but first I'm stopping somewhere to grab food. I tried to go to Chipotle because Chipotle always works for me, but it was so crowded. So I looked up and there's a Sprouts right there, which I love Sprouts. It's one of the fun parts about traveling around. You never know what you're going to find. I mean, I usually do try and bring food, but it just wasn't possible today because I'm not coming from my own home. I'm coming from my parents' home. So let me go see what I can find. And then I'm off to the next shoot, which is killing me because I passed by a Savers and a Goodwill. <laughs> so I don't think I have time to stop, but maybe. I'm so glad there was a line at Chipotle because I went into Sprouts and <laughs> this was a dollar. And I, I'm proud of myself because instead of sneaking up to the register and just getting it through, because I'm like, it's got to be a mistake. I did tell the lady. I was like, I think there's a mistake on the price. And she was like, actually, we just need to get rid of it. Nobody wants it. So we put the price low. So it's going to be either really disgusting or I really scored. <laughs> we'll know in a minute. It's wheat berries and kale and Brussels sprouts. It's delicious. Why did nobody want this? There is the most incredible sky out here tonight. I was going to the store and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to stop because like, oh, look at this. <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time this evening. This was after a very long day, but I could not ignore that sky. I knew I had to go somewhere, take my shoes off, and just take a few minutes to really soak it in. I think I spent 10 minutes out here, and I already feel like I don't know if it's the green or the sky or just, I don't know. But I'm so glad I stopped. <laughs> I got back home to New York just in time for one of my favorite seasons, bulk trash pickup season. You can drive around and find some of the most amazing treasures just piled up out on the streets. I didn't spot anything until suddenly I thought, oh my word, are my dreams coming true? I mean, what? <laughs> what if it sounds good? From afar, this piano looked like it was in pretty good shape, but as soon as I approached it, there was a lot of mold covering it. But honestly, it didn't sound all that bad for a piano that's looking pretty old and worn out. So much green. Summer weather decided to come and tease us with a little preview of what's to come. It was such a warm and beautiful day. Perfect for a quick little walk in the woods to recharge myself. It's extra sparkly today, so that's making me extra happy. Those first few times you put your bare skin out in the sun after a long winter, oh, it's just the best feeling ever. I have this idea for a photo that I want to take from up above in the sky with my drone of a girl sitting on a white blanket in a white dress in the middle of a field of these white trees. So I've been hunting for the perfect spot. It's so pretty here, but we're actually like 
I'm gonna drive over so I can show you. We're at the scene, the scene. We're at the site of what used to be a state psychiatric hospital. There are a few places like this throughout upstate New York. It's very bizarre and kind of eerie, just these empty old psychiatric institutes, but they sure do have pretty white trees. On your mark, get back, go! This was an absolutely beautiful day, the perfect kind of a day to shoot a spring picnic scene for Karina dresses. And then our model surprised us and literally brought me to tears. Oh yeah. Anybody else love to drive barefoot? <laughs> I made a quick nature pit stop on my way back. I mean, it doesn't get much more gorgeous than this. This is a five minute stop and it is giving me big payoff for just five minutes here. There's so much energy coming off that waterfall, so much like and then everything's coming to life, everything's turning green. It's just so pretty. I'm so glad I stopped. My therapy continued. I stopped in at one of my very favorite thrift stores, the Animal Thrift Store over near Hyde Park. Oh, I love it. You can get your thrifting fix and your animal fix when you visit this thrift store. I have a bit of an obsession with these little granny blankets and those were beautiful. If I didn't have so many, I would have grabbed them. Same thing with quilts. I have so many, but I am looking for just the right one for this summer. That wasn't it. And this tablecloth was also gorgeous, but I don't have a table that would fit it. And sadly, my waist won't fit that skirt. Otherwise, I would have grabbed it. But I did hit the jackpot back in the painting section. I felt like they had so many cute ones this day. I love that flower picture, but I already have so many like it. But this little one, though it's kind of worn out and probably seen better days, it just somehow reminded me of an old Paris flea market. So I took it. I used to live in Hyde Park and would come into this thrift store way too often. Some of my very favorite paintings that I own are from this thrift store. And then, oh my <laughs> word, <laughs> this made me smile. <laughs> I think it's gonna be cute up here. I don't know, is it? <laughs> I can never tell, but I, I feel like it is. I feel like it's the right vibe. Clean her up. And the picture that is hanging up back there right now just never quite felt right. This one, I just love it. I love that it's kind of beat up and I love the gold in the frame. I feel like it's gonna be perfect. The question is, are you gonna hold? I feel like it is. I think once I go ahead and paint the little command strip black, it will look a whole lot better. I feel like it's cute. I feel like it's cute for five bucks, hey. I've been pulling out some of my favorite pictures of my father from recent years, and I had been wanting to get a frame to put this particular picture in. It's my father with my last little dog, Bella, and I love this picture. I 
first I thought I might try and fix this broken frame, but with a little strategic plant placement all as well. I still cry. Bye. Thank you so much for being here and this weekend, whether you end up at a suburban park somewhere near you or in the middle of the city where there's some green space or even on a busy highway or in the middle of the woods, I hope you find something incredibly beautiful that when you look at, it just makes your heart so happy.